We all know about Linux and Linux based operating systems. Chances are, if you're watching this, you're probably running Linux, either on an Android smartphone or on your PC. But Linux is old, almost 32 years old. Still younger than me though. This means there are plenty of fun facts about Linux that I'm pretty certain you didn't know about. And of course, if there are more that aren't in this video, the comment section is always a good place to let me know about them. So let's look at a bunch of interesting Linux facts that I'm sure your loved ones will love hearing about. Just like you'll love hearing about today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Linode. Linode is the only solution I use to run my own Nextcloud server and my only office server as well. It's a super easy solution to deploy basically anything you want in one click. They have a huge marketplace of applications you can host, from Nextcloud, WordPress, Drupal, GitLab or Grafana, to gaming servers for Minecraft, Arc, CSGO, Rust, Valheim and more. They take care of all the configuration for you. All you have to do is click the thing you want to deploy, fill in a few details and your server is up and running. And once everything is live, it's still super easy to manage your servers, to upgrade or downgrade them, add some storage, back them up and get help if you're stuck. I've been using Linode for years now and I can only recommend them. If you want to give them a shot, click the link in the description below and you'll get $100 of free credit to get started. So let's start with a bunch of things about the Linux kernel. Linux is known for being relatively lean and not using too much disk space, but compared to its first version, it's now positively bloated. The first Linux release used only 65 kilobytes of disk space. Today, a compiled kernel uses 5 to 10 megabytes, which is about 153 times heavier than the original release. The number of lines of code has also been multiplied by 2700 since Linux's inception. Still lighter than most other kernels, but Linux has definitely gained some weight over the years. Now, Linux was initially created as a Minix clone, Minix being a Unix version. Since Minix was limited to 16-bit CPUs, Torvalds decided to create his own kernel that would support 32-bit, and so Linux was born. But the creator of Minix, Andrew Tannenbaum, said a few years later that Linux was obsolete because it used a monolithic kernel and that GNU Herd would supplant it soon enough. This prompted an email reply from Torvalds who basically tore Tenenbaum's arguments to shreds. And we all know how this went. Our dear Andrew was no Nostradamus because no one uses or even remembers Minix. GNU Herd is definitely not a thing and Linux is basically everywhere. Linux has also been first on the market for various important features that our computers use nowadays. The Linux kernel was the first to ever support the x86 64-bit architecture before any other system kernel ever did in 2001. And Linux was also the first to have USB 3.0 drivers added in June 2009, thanks to Sage Sharp, whose code was merged in the Linux kernel version 2.6.31. Open source does allow this kind of stuff, and with so many contributors and companies working on Linux, it's no surprise that it's often first to market with support for specific features. Now speaking about open source, let's look at some other facts. The Linux kernel was initially released under a custom license created by Linus Torvalds, which imposed restrictions on commercial use of his project and on redistributing it. Now, fortunately for all of us, this didn't last long. And with version 0.99 in 1992, the kernel moved to the GNU GPL, which it still uses today, and allowed Linux to be used, modified, redistributed, and to take its prominent place. Imagine if Linux had used a proprietary license. We would probably all be using BSD right now. And no, you don't have to tell me that you already use BSD. The Linux kernel is also the biggest software project in the world, with the biggest number of contributors and companies involved in its development. At the end of 2022, the kernel had contributions from 2,043 developers, and a lot of them work for major tech companies like Intel, Google, AMD, Huawei, Meta, NVIDIA, Alibaba, and more. 
Even Microsoft contributes to the Linux kernel, although it's mainly to make sure they can virtualize it. It has nothing to do with trying to use Linux in Windows instead of the anti-kernel. Now let's talk branding. First, Linux almost wasn't called Linux. The first name Torvalds landed on was Freaks for Free Unix. But as things happened, hosting that Freaks kernel was initially done by Ari Lemke, a member of the staff for Helsinki's university, where Torvalds was studying. And this person created a directory called Linux, because that was Torvalds' working name. And Torvalds initially did not want the kernel to be called Linux, because he felt that would feel very egotistical. And fortunately, the name Linux stuck. We already have a small enough market share. Can you imagine telling to people over and over that you use Arch Freaks, by the way? Now, in terms of mascot, we have Tux, the slightly round penguin that everyone loves. And the name of that mascot is Tux, not because penguins wear tuxedos naturally, but because it stands for Torvalds Unix. Why a penguin, though? It's because Torvalds had a cute encounter with a little penguin when he visited a zoo in Australia, when the aforementioned flightless bird nibbled on his hand, and, in the words of Torvalds, gave him penguinitis, a disease that apparently makes you stay awake at night thinking about penguins. I mean, don't we all stay up at night thinking about Linux? I know I do. And also, the Linux Tux mascot was changed for a conference for Tuz, which was a Tasmanian devil wearing a penguin costume. But the Linux kernel also has code names that aren't widely used, but are always completely inappropriate for a system used by so many businesses and servers. For example, version 3.14 was called Shuffling Zombie Juror. Version 4.3 was Blurry Fish Butt, and version 6.0 is Herder I'm a Ninja Sloth. Other wonderful code names include One Giant Leap for Frog Kind, Displaced Humorous Interior, or Sheep on Meth. And I personally prefer this to every single other code name I ever read about. Take that, Ubuntu. But also, the Linux name was almost lost to a trademark dispute. In 1995, someone named William R. De La Croce Jr., the most evil-sounding name I ever heard, filed for a trademark on Linux. He then proceeded to send letters to various Linux distributors, asking for 10% royalties, like the ultimate one-person patent troll. In 1997, Torvalds and a bunch of other entities that used the Linux name bunched together to appeal the original trademark as fraudulent and they won in November of that year, at which point Torvalds owned the trademark. And maybe we would have come back to freaks if the lawsuit was lost, but thankfully it wasn't. And as a final footnote in the branding department, Linux is also a brand of laundry detergent in Switzerland, which apparently never filed a lawsuit against Linux and wasn't sued by Torvalds, because who would be stupid enough to mix the two? Although one might say that the name is appropriate for detergent, because basically when you remove Windows and install Linux, you're doing a deep clean of your computer. Now let's talk about Linus Torvalds. Torvalds was a pretty hot developer, and Apple noticed. Steve Jobs offered him a job around the year 2000, with a sizable salary and a good position in the organization. The pitch was, work on Unix for a bigger user base. The only condition was that he abandoned Linux and stopped working on it altogether. Torvalds obviously refused because he liked working on Linux, he saw its potential, and also he didn't like macOS's Mac kernel. He publicly said that he never regretted that decision. And now that we know that Steve Jobs was probably one of the worst bosses to work for in tech at the time, he probably made the right decision. But Torvalds isn't just the creator of the Linux kernel, he also created Git. Yep, that thing every developer uses today, and that spawned GitLab and also GitHub, which is ironically now owned by Microsoft. The first version was in 2005, and it was a major improvement over all other distributed version control systems. And Git is named like that because it's a slang word in British English that means an unpleasant person, which Torvalds jokingly said was a reference to himself. Something that turned out to be kinda true, as Torvalds had to take a self-imposed retreat from managing the kernel because he was becoming incredibly toxic to other contributors, even saying to someone that they should kill themselves. 
And let's finish this with a bunch of use cases for Linux. First, Linux is basically running the film industry and Hollywood. The first movie to use Linux was Titanic in 1997, rendered using OpenSUSE. But it didn't stop there. Avatar's effects were rendered on Linux server farms. Lord of the Rings? Linux. iRobot? Linux. And nowadays, most of the major tools for digital effects have a Linux version, like Houdini, Maya, SoftImage, and others. So next time you go see a big blockbuster with two identical characters shooting rays of different colored lightning at each other, you can think of a nice little penguin instead. Linux also runs the space industry. From NASA to SpaceX or the International Space Station or the latest Mars helicopter, they all run Linux. SpaceX's reusable rocket, the Falcon 9, runs a stripped-down Linux on three very basic x86 dual-core CPUs. The International Space Station runs on 1988 20 MHz Intel CPUs. So, obviously, they use Linux, because there's virtually nothing else with that level of support, backwards compatibility, and efficiency. I mean, could you see Windows running a flight computer and having to reboot mid-launch because it has to install updates? And also in the supercomputer world, Linux is the only option. Out of the fastest 500 supercomputers, Linux runs 100% of them. Or at least it did in early 2023. That percentage rose and rose over the years, and while it occasionally drops back to 99%, it's generally a complete monopoly. What this means is that Linux is at the core of major advancements in technology, science, and research, and the preferred option to run all these incredibly complex calculations. When you want to get some really serious work done, you use Linux. So that's it for all these Linux-related factoids. So if you knew every single one of them, let me know. If you didn't, let me know what you learned. And if I missed anything, let me know in the comments as well. And in the meantime, I'll let you know about our sponsor. If you're in the market for a new computer and you plan to run Linux on it, stop buying devices that were made to run Windows. Buy something from Tuxedo. They make laptops and desktops that run Linux out of the box. The components are specifically picked to run Linux well. They have a big range of devices. They're based in Germany, but they ship to most countries in the world. And they'll cover basically every need and every price point. All their devices are very customizable and all the laptops are openable, upgradable and repairable, including the battery, the RAM, the SSD and sometimes even the wireless card. You can also add your own custom logo, pick your own custom keyboard layout. It's great. So if you need a new computer and you plan to run Linux, well, click the link in the description and get yourself a Tuxedo computer. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications or to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, you can always dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel, well, you can always support it. There are plenty of links in the description for LibraPay, PayPal, Patreon, YouTube memberships, whatever else. You know how this works. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.